So now, so we both have a top five list of our favorite like B movies. Yes, that makes, oh yeah. So, <laughs> um, I guess we should start off by talking about like what what is a B movie and like what in your mind classifies a movie as a B movie. I feel like the the definition has kind of changed over time because I feel like before B movies were movies you couldn't always get access to. They were usually copied on a VHS or something that were passed around between friends or something like that. But now I feel like with Netflix, you know, young directors or first time directors can get exposure that way. So I feel like the definitions changed a little bit. Um, but a B movie to me is just something that I don't know, just flies under the radar, I guess. Mm -hmm. They can be good, they can be really bad. Um, I guess it's I guess that's just whatever speaks to you. I guess maybe there's always a different definition for everyone of what quantifies yeah. the movie. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um I think so I think the term really started in like the fifties. And I don't know if you'd call Plan Nine from Outer Space a B movie. I feel like it's even worse than that. But it's stuff like that. It's because Back in the day, the studios made everything. Yes. And there were like four or five. Yeah. And they made everything and they they controlled everything too. Right. So if you made a film in like 1948 and you weren't a part of the studio system, I mean, it would be really hard for you to get it national distribution just because, you know, Paramount owned theaters, Fox owned theaters. Warner Brothers own theater. They all own their theaters and they only played their movies. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't maybe necessarily realize that today like because we can go and see, I don't know, like a Hobbit movie at any theater, at any Regal yep. or whatever theater you mm -hmm. want. Uh, but back then, studios were, and still are, to an extent, very, very powerful. They can, yeah. they can break a career just like that. But yeah. for a lot of actors, they had so much to offer as well so you kind of got really trapped which is also unfortunate yeah yeah i mean yeah the old studio system they they controlled the actors they controlled the writers they controlled the directors they had them on salary they said okay you know you're going to be in this movie and you're going to be with this actor or this actress and that's it oh and like, by the way you, if you could pretend to be in love in real life that would help really help our image as well like i believe it was tyrone power and i think loretta young maybe someone like that like he was in love with one actress and the studio was like you can't you can't marry her she mm. belongs to paramount or, Fox yeah. or Warner brothers or something like you can't like it, it, it would be terrible it would be like an intra um studio marriage and it's not <laughs> it was very shakespearean when you really think about it too it was i mean they're still bad they're still bad today <laughs> the studios are not yeah holier than that um, yeah but so yeah at the time, like a B movie would have been a movie not produced by these big studios, even like RKO, which was like a mid major at the time, a, a movie produced by a studio outside of that system that sort of got some play. Um, I, and I think it's evolved over time because, you know, distribution has gotten easier. So like in the maybe seventies or eighties, it would be like something that was on tape or it would only play in like kind of CD theaters. Um, to me, nowadays, I'd say B-movie is like a way of life, <laughs> you know? It's a way of creating a film. It's like, it's creating a film where you get all the most efficient stuff, you know? People who like scares and violence and action and sex appeal, those things that are just like universal. Like if you have two attractive leads, scary stuff and cool action, that just sells, right? Mm -hmm. And, and it's about having fun. It's like creating films that are fun or like weird titles, you know, weird stuff. Yeah, so, and sometimes they can be a huge success, like, mm -hmm. and everyone's surprised by it. Yeah, just like think of a movie like Species. That's like a perfect, you know, B-movie example. Just fill, fits that formula. Weird premise. It's either sci-fi, action, or horror. And, you know, attractive leads. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Okay. It. So, um, all right. So let's start with our list. So what's your number five? Um, so my number five is The Last Exorcism. Um, I think Eli Roth was a producer or something like that. And I didn't 
I don't like exorcism, exorcism mm. movies, and I don't particularly care for found footage movies. And this movie is both of those things, and I loved it. Um, I felt a deep connection to the main character. I was, I did it during like my September Fest thing, where I make mm, myself yeah. watch like movies that I don't don't normally watch, and. I was blown away by it. Again, it's a movie that, because it's found footage, there's virtually no musical score. Um, so you rely heavily on sound editing, which I love. And it is truly disturbing and very creepy. And the end, it just, it, blowed, it blew my mind. I was mm -hmm. just like, they're really going there. And they committed to what they were doing, which I really appreciated. And... I asked a few of my friends who uh, and my sister who likes horror movies. She's like, no, I've, I've never heard of it. I've never seen it. I'm like, please watch it. It's streaming mm -hmm. now, and I don't know how much longer it's going to be yeah. streaming. Um, but that was that kind of surprised me a lot. Very cool. Are there any name actors in it, or is it just like all no-name people? Um, it's mostly no-name people. The only one I really recognized was the main character, who's Patrick Fabian, and he's a television actor and... Um, Again, some more probably what we'd call B movie um, mm -hmm. actor as well. But he's been in a bunch of different things that I, I recognize. He was even in Desperate Housewives at one point. Mm. Um, but no, he's a he's a pretty good character actor that I really like. Very cool. Yeah. So that's definitely I haven't seen that one. I'll have it's, to check it out. It's very good. <laughs> cool. All right. So my number five is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So, and again, like these really wacky titles, weird stuff. Um, this is like, so I live in the Bay Area. And so this, this film takes place in Santa Cruz. Okay. And so a lot of it has to do with the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, which is like a really cool attraction. And it's, it's, it is a weird movie. I saw it as a kid and it didn't really scare me a lot. I mean, there was a couple scenes that were a little creepy and scary, but it was just, it was funny. It was fun. It's really goofy. The premise is goofy. The title from itself, you're like, okay. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have to know what the hell is going on with this movie. And this is a, like a classic B movie in that, you know, it's it it didn't get a lot of play when it first came out. It was made pretty independently. And <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure like whenever the producers pitched, like, oh hey, so the movie's called Killer Clowns from Outer Space to like distributors, they were like, uh, okay, what? goodbye. What is that? <laughs> Why are there clowns in outer space? Like, the yeah, title yeah. itself raises so many questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if they're aliens. They're clowns. Alien clowns. And not like it kind of clown. Okay. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, it raises all these questions, but it it just, it just it, it knows what it is. And it plays it as a goofy, fun, silly B-movie. Um, and yeah, I, I just remember it as a kid and it's just like, it's just like a fun, wacky movie, um, just to watch, turn your brain off and <laughs> enjoy for like 90 minutes. <laughs> nice. We need movies like that though in our lives. We can't always yeah. be consuming drama or something like that. Yeah. It's fine if that's what your bag is, but mm -hmm. I need some goofiness in my life sometimes. Totally. Totally. I mean, you can only deal with so much drama. I can only have so much drama. I need okay, some. Cool. So what's your what's your number four? Um, my number four is The Hallow, which I also watched during a September fest. It's, it's got a few people from Game of Thrones whose names I cannot remember. But you'll recognize plenty of Game of Thrones actors. And, of course, it's about this guy who moves into this really picturesque cabin in the woods in Ireland and a fairy comes along and he's convinced that it, his baby is a changeling and that the mm. changeling is going to kill him and his wife. So there's a lot of really good suspense where he is going to kill this baby, but he's very torn by it. And of course you're like, please don't kill a baby on screen. That's something I can't deal with in movies. I can't watch it. Um, but it's very suspenseful. It's very good. And you're not sure if he's actually going crazy mm -hmm. or whatever else and there's some really good body horror in it as well yeah. um because like the changelings like shoot these spores out of their fingertips so it gets in you and you like start sprouting things um which, ugh, freaks me out but that's that's another really good one and it was on netflix for a while i don't i don't know if it is anymore i think i watched it like mm -hmm. three years ago mm -hmm. um but that's another really good one that i really liked 
Yeah, I think I, I, I saw that one maybe within the last half a year as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's like you said, there's this stuff with the changeling and the kids. And like there, there's like his wife too, right? Yeah, I think at some point, I think his wife, he thinks his wife got switched or something like that. Um, but it, it definitely stuck out to me, mostly because of like, yeah. it's the whole the who can I trust kind of a thing when, yeah. or can I even trust my own mind kind of a thing as well. Yeah, doppelgangers done, done right is very scary. Yes. <clears throat> it's very scary. Cool. All right, so my number four is Legion. Um, so Legion is this really interesting film. Um, it's got some good actors in it. It's got like a bunch of people that were in um, like Fast and Furious movies. Uh, like Tyrese is in it. Uh, the other kid who's in Tokyo Drift, he's in it. Um, and the premise is um, a angel has come down from heaven to help these people prevent the end of the world but i guess oh, god okay. yeah god <laughs> i think god wants to end the world when so they yeah <laughs> so the angel's gone rogue and it, it's it, it's pretty ridiculously crazy so like i forget who the the lead is there's a guy who played vision in um in in the oh, mcu yeah i know who you're talking about his yeah. name will come to me probably after we can yeah something baby but... something like that Forget his name. Uh, Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. I yeah, Paul Bettany. So Paul Bettany's the lead. He doesn't get a lot of lead roles, I don't feel like. But in this, he's really cool. So he comes down to Earth. He's in like L.A. He's like downtown L.A. There's a bunch of cops, and then he like he like gets a he just he just raids an armory, and then he drives to this. Um, they're in like a diner in the middle of nowhere, and people start mutating into these creatures and they the creatures are coming after them oh, and so wow. they yeah so they have to do a stand they have to survive like x number of hours or something like that and this woman is pregnant and she's I, I don't know giving birth to some messianic figure or something like that um and there there's some really cool like practical effects there's this this one where a woman transforms into a demon and then starts crawling on the on the ceiling. Um, there's another one where uh, the really great actor, uh, I think his name's Doug Jones, like the guy who, who does like, he's in like every... Um, oh yeah, Doug Jones. He plays yeah. every scary monster pretty much. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. in every Guillermo del Toro movie. Yeah, he's in Star Trek Discovery. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he plays a, a, a guy... Um, so he's, he shows up in a <laughs> ice cream truck and then he just like mutates and his arms get really long and he like crawls after him and they, they like got to blast him. It's just, it's really an entertaining movie. It's, and there's a lot of stuff where, you know, you get invested in the characters. You really do. They actually do a good job of like making you care about them and not want them to, to die. Um, even though, you know, it's it's one of those movies where not everyone makes it. Most of them don't make it. Um, and the, and the CGI is pretty good. There's a couple scenes like there's, there's a scene where, so I forget who the angel who Paul Bettany plays is. I don't know. I don't know if it's Raphael or whatever, but like Gabriel shows up and like they have this massive fight. It's like crazy. <laughs> so yeah, Legion. And it's, it is a B movie, like the premise, everything about it. It's like guns, violence, weird, <clears throat> demons crazy premise just go with it um yeah so i would anyone who hasn't seen it it's a it's a fun movie to watch i definitely recommend it nice i actually really like paul bettany like i like a lot of the movies that he's in or if i don't always like the movie i definitely always like him because sometimes a movie can be bad but an actor mm -hmm. can still give pretty good performance um and he seems to always pretty deliver most of the time yeah i like him a lot like he's I mean, he's talk about a lucky guy. He's married to um, like one of the most beautiful actresses ever. Yes. Um, so like, yeah, he's set in life, and like he he's yeah he puts in great performances like for the last. But I feel like he never has leads. No, he's not all, really. He doesn't really. I know this might sound weird. He doesn't always have the like, like the stereotypical look of like a leading man. If that makes any sense. 
Um, but sometimes those character or the supporting character roles can be a little bit more interesting to play. Yeah. I feel like sometimes, um, yeah. at least I would find them interesting to play because if you're not the leading man, you kind of have to like give kind of a little bit more. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. He's he's got a lot of good supporting. Like he he's he's um. He was, what was that movie? Um, oh, I forget. Anyway, he's done a lot of great supporting roles and just like acting in general. I think he's been really great. And, you know, we'll see him more as Vision in <laughs> upcoming TV shows. WandaVision. Yeah, WandaVision, yep. Um, cool, so yeah, so what's your uh, number three? My number three is actually a movie I recently watched earlier this year. Um, my older sister and her boyfriend love B movies, and when they find a really good one, they generally let me know. Um, but it is called The Company of Wolves, and it mm -hmm. came out in 1984. This is the only movie that has been able to depict what my nightmares feel like to me, and ha I almost I started having a panic attack oh. at one point because there's this there's this moment, and I was like, "You need to pause the movie." And my <laughs> sister was like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "This is my nightmare. Yeah, like this is a nightmare I have." And it's it's a dream within a story within a story. Like there's consistently like just multiple stories going on at once, and you're not even really sure by the end of it. Like, well, where does the beginning? Where what is the beginning of this movie? Um, because you know, with dreams, there tend to be multiple layers. Like one minute we're in our house, and the next minute we're in a forest mm -hmm. being chased by wolves for some yeah. reason. And yeah. that's exactly how the movie is. It's yeah. literally oh. like watching a projection of a dream, and it's terrifying, and probably has some of the best, next to an American werewolf in London, has some of the best practical effects of a man transforming into a wolf. Mm. It's it's very, very good. Interesting. I haven't heard of this film. It sounds like something to explore. I think it was like made by a French director or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but like in very early eighties and experimental, very like artsy, um, but very good. Oh, Angela Lansbury's in it. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. That's that's one I've never heard from before. I highly recommend it. Cool. All right, so my number three film is Deep Blue Sea. So this Deep Blue Sea is like to me the. <laughs> The prototypical, like, the, sh the difference between a B-movie back in the day and now. Like, this is a B-movie, but it does have a big budget. Is that the shark one? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a shark I one. It. It, I like that it's one. The genetically mutated sharks that are smart. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, these crazy premises. Like, the premise is, okay, so, like, you know, the, you know the pitch was like, okay, like, imagine Jaws, but the, sh the shark was even smarter, and there's more of them. There's three sharks. More. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, you're stuck on an island. You're stuck on a, a floating island, so you can't even like leave. And they can get inside. <laughs> yeah, and they can get inside. So this movie, this movie is just like so and it's got like great act Sam Jackson's in it, and he's awesome. Um st the dad scars guard, I forget. Uh yeah. Stellan Sarsgaard. Stellan, yeah, yeah. I think he's I, I love him, but yeah, he's in it. <laughs> yeah, he's in it. He's 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 awesome. Um who else is in it? Um, Thomas Jane, like Mr. B movie. I love Thomas Jane. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Jane. I, just I like, <laughs> yeah, and he's just like the king of the B movie. Like in B movies, he's so good. He's think, always so good. I, I again, I'm not going to try and derail you, but there is a short Punisher film that he was. Have you seen mm -hmm. it? I've seen it. Yeah, I saw I've it very seen the recently. Whole movie in that. <laughs> Well, the reason why is because there's these money people who are like, oh, well, I don't really like him being that violent. Do, do you think people are going to like that? And it's, it's like, so yes, hard. people are going to like it's always It's always the suits who get in the way a lot of the time. I hate that. That's the problem. That's but the sorry. problem. Yes, um, Deep Blue Sea is. Yeah, Deep Blue Sea. It, it's so, I mean, LL Cool J's in this movie. I love um, LL Cool J. It, it, this movie's really fun, and it just... I mean, one of one of cinema's greatest moments is in this movie. Honestly, yes. like, <laughs> yes. you know what I'm talking about. It's like 
Sam Jackson's not going to be eaten by a shark. What are you yeah. That's another, this movie pulls no punches. Yeah. No one is safe. And it, in that death and then the very end prove that no yeah. one is safe. No one's safe. And what's so great about that moment, too, is like you don't see it coming. And the fact that Sam Jackson did it and he loves doing stuff like that. He just loves it, and it just makes it because you're like, okay, he's gonna lead them. It's gonna be fun, and oh my god, he got to play a fucking shark. And it's just it it it's good for the story because that leaves the characters with well, now who are we gonna look to? Yeah, you know, they're in like total somebody, disarray. Somebody else has to step into that position, into that character, yeah. and and again, the kid gloves are off entirely, yeah. and mm-hmm. it doesn't look all that. It doesn't look. I don't think it's aged the worst, but I also don't think yeah. it's aged the best. Again, you're working with what you have, and mm-hmm. for the budget, I don't. I think it looks it looks fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're really in it for you know these 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 moments with like Sam Jackson and then stuff with Thomas Jane, and the rest. It's really just Jaws. Yeah, it's just Jaws in a in a different location and a bigger bigger stakes. Yep. And the ending is basically the same, right? Yeah, yeah don't, they blow it up, right? <laughs> they blow them well, up. How else are you going to get rid of it? You know what I mean? At that point, right? you kind of write yourself into a corner. We're like, well, yeah. we already blew it up in Jaws, but we're going to do it yeah. differently. We're still going to blow it up. We're going to do it just a little different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's literally the same thing. They just they just blow the shark up. But it's still fun. It's still, yeah. you know. And it's, it's got some good suspense. It's, mm-hmm. it's got some scariness to it. You know, like, again, my fear of water is, I don't like being able to not see where my feet are. Yeah. And if I can't see my feet, what else is there that I can't see? And that, that suspense alone for someone who doesn't like water is just, ugh. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, yeah, so Deep Blue Sea, got to make my list. I mean, it's just I love it. classic <laughs> B-movie. Yeah. All right, cool. So what's your number two? Um, my number two is actually another found footage film, which surprised me. It is called The Taking of Deborah Logan. Mm -hmm. And it's basically about this um, college group, this college um, group that's making a documentary about Alzheimer's and they get in contact with this woman who's taking care of her aging grandmother or mother, I forget which one. Um, I was like, yeah, she's been acting really strange lately, you know, just give her some space and, you know, whatever. Well, you're not sure if she's, being possessed by a demon or if she really these are just symptoms of alzheimer's and lo and behold there's a demon after her because Mm -hmm. she's got a pretty innocent dainty little deborah logan's got a dark past and Mm. it's 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 pretty freaky because again it's one of those things where like they'll just be filming and they're they're talking to each other and then they pan over and she's just standing there and it's really creepy or she's on a table she's levitating you know and it's just this, these poor college kids who have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And the ending is utterly tragic because, yeah, maybe they get rid of the demon, but she still, she still has no idea what's going on. And it's, it's just a, it's a really, um, it's a, just a sad movie, honestly, but it's very good. Cool. I think, yeah, I, I have a f- similar feeling with, like uh found footage films like i just there's something about the whole the whole thing that just doesn't work for me yeah it's just it's 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 okay like obviously i don't hate all of them because there's two yeah. on my list but it's, it has to be a very specific yes kind like if it starts becoming too unbelievable they would have a video camera here or something um then i just it takes me out of the moment mm-hmm. honestly yeah, yeah. um yeah, there aren't many that I really like. I mean, probably the Blair Witch Project would be a good one. Uh, Chronicle is solid. I never That's did taking... see Chronicle. I heard a lot of yeah. things about it, though. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I... <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's great. But what's more interesting is, like, what happened to the careers of the people who were involved afterward. That's a whole other cluster. Well, the director, <laughs> the director ended up doing Fantastic Four, and that was a disaster. That like, was him. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. It, it 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 ruined his career. It just ruined his career. You mean like the remake it. of the Fantastic Four, right? Yeah, the really bad one, the Fan Four stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one where Doc 
Doctor Doom had a trash bag for a costume. <laughs> <laughs> and the like funny thing is LED green lights. <laughs> the funny thing is that doom is like the best part of the movie basically oh like that God. like the when doom goes and kills a bunch of people that's the best part of the movie everything else is a total snooze fest or a disaster and then they rewrote the third act yeah <laughs> that movie yes <laughs> that poor man yeah yeah that's there was another. a lot yeah, I was gonna say there's an, that's another instance where like suits metal that I feel oh, like he got time. screwed. Big time, yeah, yeah. You know, it happens. Um, all right, so my my number two is this film called The Hidden. Um, have you ever seen this film or heard of it? I have not. Okay, cool. So let me I'll give you the pitch for The Hidden. So it's Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets The Terminator. That's The Hidden. Okay. <laughs> I would so, like more. Yeah. So um, the only I feel like the only actor that I really know is Kyle MacLachlan. This was okay. like kind of I think this came out in like the late '80s, so he was kind of big but not really big. So there are these. So the movie starts off with a bang. Okay, there's a shootout and a chase scene from the jump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then okay. like we we don't really know what's going on exactly, but we see some weird stuff. And what we learn is that there are these aliens that inhabit a human's body and they take them over. And when they take over a human's body, they can't feel pain. And so this, there's an evil alien that is doing a bunch of stuff and it has this, this sinister plan. And the Kyle McLaughlin alien is a good guy. And then he befriends another cop and they're trying to kill the bad alien. That's the plot. Okay. But cool. but these aliens are Terminators, straight up. They can't feel pain. They just go around killing, destroying anything that they want. And there's some really like it's it's a it's a action horror film. Like there is some really hor horrifying stuff. So like there's one scene where um the the bad alien gets hurt so bad that he has to basically switch bodies, and you see the alien go into another body. Yeah, oh. it's nasty. But, you know, really cool and memorable and really cool practical effects. So, <laughs> I'm all, sorry, I am all about practical effects. I'm like, I love them. I really yeah, do. I, I would, for anyone who hasn't seen this film, The Hidden, definitely recommend it. It's, I won't, I'll, I'll try not to give away too much. The ending is really good too. There's a, there's this climactic scene uh, <laughs> where, you know, if you just like imagine what's the worst thing that could happen with a body snatching alien, like what, whose body could it take over? <laughs> Donald Trump. Ew. Wait, am I'll just, I right? I'll, I'll just leave. You gotta watch the movie. I'll just leave okay, it out I'm there. I'm writing down the hidden. I'll just, I'll just leave it out there. Like, the worst thing that could happen with a body snatching alien. Just imagine that. Um, an evil body snatching alien. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, the hidden. A, a absolute awesome action B-movie from the 80s gotta see it really good um cool so and do we we covered your number two right so yes right, that was, yeah the same right. Deborah logan was my number two cool so what's your number one my number one might be the most b movie <laughs> it comes all the way from 1989 and it is called arena and it is about intergalactic space wrestling lots of puppets and I don't remember, the, there's no name actors in this movie, and there are absolutely none, except that the main character looks exactly like Christopher Reeves with blonde hair. Like, <laughs> he is a dead ring. If they saw this guy, they were like, you know how we could trick people to come see this movie? If we cast this guy, because he looks yeah. exactly like Superman. And I just, I watched this movie probably for the first time eight years ago at this point, and I've never forgotten it because it is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. I think his best friend is a puppet. Uh, but it's literally, like, because that's, like, at the height of, like, WWE, WCW, wrestling was, like, a huge thing. Wrestlers were becoming actors a little bit. And, yeah, it's just aliens wrestling each other. <laughs> it's just so, I think there's some kind of mafia plot involved as well, some kind of space mafia but it's very ridiculous, but it's, it's just a lot of fun. 
again, it's one of those just goofy things that yeah. you don't, don't take it seriously. Just enjoy it. I think I saw there's someone that I that I subscribe to on YouTube that like does movie stuff, and they had bought a VHS of that movie, and they were playing the trailer. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, it looks it looks interesting. Yep, it's 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 weird. It's just weird. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check it out. Sounds fun. Um, so my number one movie is. John Carpenter movie, They Live. So speaking of wrestlers turned actors, right? So this has, um, oh, I forget, I forget the guy's name, but he's a, he was a wrestler. Was it Rowdy, Rowdy Piper yeah, or something like that? That's right. Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. He's in it. <clears throat> There's a fun scene where he, him and the other guy, they wrestle <laughs> in like a back alley in a fight. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's one of the coolest movies of all time. Like just the premise and like the thematic stuff about what the, what it's really saying is just so cool. Yeah. It's one of my dad's favorite movies. I remember yeah. seeing parts of it when I was a kid and I remember it kind of freaking me out. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. Cause it's like, you know, it's like one of those kind of, it's like the classic kind of conspiracy stuff. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, they're, they are controlling us. Who is they in this? It's aliens. So it's aliens. More aliens. Yeah. And the aliens are like, you know, they're controlling us and we're just like a product for them and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah. And then he puts on the glasses and he could see the aliens. And so then he, I think that's you know, what freaked me out when I was little was the glasses part. And I, yeah. I, Yeah, <laughs> it's like, Sorry. yeah. Um, but I, I think it's a really good film. I mean, it's like a really solid film. It, it, the pace is really quick. It, like, before you know it, it's like the film's over. And it's, it's just so good at what it's trying to do. You know, it's got this really smart premise. And I feel like the theme is pretty, pretty like, even today, it kind of resonates with people. Uh -huh. You know, they feel like they're being controlled by these these forces that are basically corporations, right? Exactly. That are controlling us that want us to just be drones. Buy, um, buy, buy. Yeah. Buy, produce, sell, you know, <laughs> reproduce or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's funny stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I this was actually a hard list for me to make because I, I I had a whole bunch of like honorable mentions like Slither. Slither's um, really great, yep. Yeah, the Warriors from the eighties, the New York gang Oh Battle no, movie. I don't think I've ever seen that. No. Oh yeah, that's that's a that is a super classic B movie. Super classic. It's like New York City's been taken over by gangs and there's there's gang warfare, but then all the gangs blame the warriors and so then they're all after them and so the warriors have to fight their way out. Really cool. Um Death Race from 2008 is another one of my favorite ones. Um Tremors. Oh, I love really Tremors. Good. Tremors is amazing b-movie um anaconda from the 90s like sometimes i forget that was a movie but it's yeah. actually kind of fun that movie's so fun i mean the cast is amazing it's super goofy it's you know some of the cgi still kind of holds up um yeah. john Voight just completely is that character i forget the character's name but he is just it's like yeah i am this person yeah, like to I feel totally. like he was method on that on that character. He, yeah, he did. He <laughs> he immersed himself. Um, J Lo's in it. Um, L um, Ice Cube's in it. Ice Cube, yeah, yeah, Ice Cube's in it. Um, I feel like there's other people in it too. It's just it's 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 amazing. It's so fun. And it when I was a kid, I saw A League and Freaks in theaters. That was one of the most fun movies. I'd ever seen in a theater. <laughs> and I yeah, have... another just oh, yeah, go go ahead. Ahead. no, go you go ahead. Yeah, so it's just it's just a goofy premise. It's like okay, um, um, it's just spiders, nuclear waste, giant spiders, go. <laughs> oh, eight legged freaks! Yes, my parents. That was one of the one of the movies my dad ordered from Netflix for the first time. We ordered Harry Potter. And I think that was also Eight Legged Freaks was another one, yeah. Yeah, it's just so fun, and it's like Baby Scarlett Johansson's in it. 
I know. I forget that she was like, she's not necessarily a child actor, but like a tween actor kind of. A thing. Yeah. She's very, um, yeah. You see her in a lot of stuff when she was like pretty young. Yeah. Um, I had the prophecy on mine, but I didn't, I didn't include it for some reason, but I love, I love the prophecy. It's such uh, growing up in a religious household. That was like a movie that was not allowed. So <laughs> now that I'm an adult, but my brothers who were also who were angsty teenagers would watch it up in the loft and I would be like, mm -hmm. what are you watching? Go, go read the Bible. I'm like, uh -huh. I'm not reading the fucking Bible. <laughs> um, so when I finally watched it from start to finish, not just these tiny little snippets here and there, which I'd create an entirely different plot in my mind. I was like, wow, this is actually a really I can understand why my parents did not want me to see this movie, especially since angels are depicted as such ruthless, awful yeah. creatures. And yeah. Christopher Walken is just so good. Like, yeah. His delivery of his lines is great. Like, I love his little speech in it where he's like, I'm an angel. I kill babies and salt the earth, basically. That's what I am. Mm. And it's just this really good little monologue that he has. And it's got you know a bunch of recognizable people from the '80s and it and '90s, and uh, Viggo Mortensen as the yeah, devil Viggo. is one of my favorite depictions of the devil, because um, he's just he's in a suit, yeah, he's slimy. His hair, the way yeah. his hair is slicked back, and he's just like ugh, creepy. Vibes. Viggo, Viggo is like Viggo gives so many interesting performances because I feel like he's the type of guy who like if he's gonna do a part he really wants to do that part for a specific yeah. reason. He's got a great range, like a yeah. really interesting body of work. I feel like he's right up there with Daniel Day-Lewis, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just a chameleon. Ever seen uh, Carlito's Way? No, I haven't. Oh, Carlito's Way. He's in Carlito's Way for maybe four minutes, maybe, probably like three minutes. Unbelievable. Like, I unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable he's i would definitely that, that's a really good like 90s gangster kind of movie um i would definitely recommend it um and he's in it he's incredible um i i recently saw this movie mr fantastic that he i don't know if you've seen that um but he's really really good in that movie as just like a really freewheeling dad who's raising his kids to be super radical mm -hmm. <laughs> um and, you know, he just, yeah, like you said, he has such amazing range. He can just do so many things. Yeah, I mean, he's freaking Aragorn. Yeah, he's Aragorn. And you Aragorn, know what's funny? Sorry. So he wasn't even, he, they didn't even cast him at first as a role. Wasn't it the guy who played Lestat? In yeah, it was Lestat. When I heard that, I was like, I am so glad history did not go that way. Like, Well, I mean, they, they had to fire him. It didn't work. Oh my god, I'm so glad that he got fired. I, I really kind of feel bad for that guy because so he gets fired off of that and then he was at one point, I believe he was married to Charlize Theron and then she <laughs> broke off with him. I mean, he must be doing something wrong. It was the queen of the damned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I also liked him in Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen as, uh, who was he? Oh my god, um, he was in that. He, he was, was really good. Dorian Gray. Wasn't he the Dorian he was, Gray character? Yeah, he was Dorian Gray. That makes complete sense. He just like had this in those two roles. I feel like he had this this really interesting charisma that I don't think he's ever replicated, and I don't I don't know if I've ever seen an actor really replicate it. Where it, it he just he just had something about him that that was electric. Yeah, you know, I don't actually dislike that movie. Like, I haven't seen it in a very long time, but it kind of came out around the same time as, you know, like, Van Helsing, when those kinds of movies were still, like, being made of, like, famous, fictional, larger-than-life yeah. characters. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just the perfect storm. Sometimes yeah. it's who you're surrounded by, you know, even if we're not actors, we've worked in groups, I'm sure, before. And sometimes it's just a good combination of, of yeah. whatever the elements are around you. Um, because, oh, uh, what's his name? Um, Billy Zane, mm -hmm. who was in The Phantom. Mm -hmm. He is in one of my favorite World War II movies, and he gives a phenomenal performance. Mm. It's called The Memphis Bell. Okay. And his character is so relatable, mm. and he gives, it's just a perfect storm of the other actors around him. The director yeah. believed in him, yeah. and he was really good. And then you have Phantom. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. He kind of he 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 basically peaked with Titanic, and then he kind of went down a hill. Yeah, and it's, um, just, it's really unfortunate, but there are those instances where mm-hmm. some an actor who shit on all the time can deliver. And yeah, totally. It's almost like why can't it be like this all the time? Yeah, Leave, Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen is another one where the studio big time put their hand on it. Um, they they made them create a character that wasn't in the comic. They made them put in Tom Sawyer into this movie when this is this is basically a a, a bunch of Victorian British characters, yeah. and they threw in this American. And it's like what? Why? Just- and it's like it, yeah, it's like a thirty year old Tom Sawyer, and it's like no, it didn't it didn't work at all. No. That didn't work. But you know, I think. I think that there, I, I forget, I was watching, there, there's some films, I think that they're just not ready in the, in the, in the, I, in the I, ether. Yeah. Like there's, there's not enough knowledge about certain characters for it to really work. And I remember watching, um, recently I just, I just rewatched part of Dream, this movie Dreamcatcher, which is a Stephen King adaptation. Yeah, same part now, of mm-hmm. the, the movie and the book, I think that they're both not great, but there was a scene. So the main characters in Dreamcatcher are from Derry. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, they're from Derry. And there's a scene where there's this this mentally handicapped girl goes missing, and they they find her. Guess where they find her? Is it with Pennywise? They they see her in a sewer. They see her in a sewer, right? So then, the, and 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 I'm watching the scene. They lower the kid down into the sewer and he's like holding his feet like, hey, let me help you. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is insane. Because now in the context of today, we're like, dude, that's that could be Pennywise. That could be right. And so it's like dairy sewer. That's Pennywise. But, you know, today that has a totally different context. They didn't actually play that scene for for scares. Like, I feel like today you would play that scene differently in a way that really like pays off that, like the fact that Pennywise exists in this time. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's like, you know, and then there was that, that movie, that nineties, like, I don't know, it was like a mini series with, with it. Yeah. It was but, like a made for TV yeah. mini series with um, Tim Curry. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, w- which was really good for the time. Um, but like that, that type of stuff, like if you make Dreamcatcher today, if you just like made it, with the kids in the eighties. And I, I think it would, it would play a lot differently because yeah. now people are aware of Pennywise. They're aware of, okay. It's almost like a sequel to, to it. And I feel like for, um, the leave of short name general, there just wasn't enough for people to care about those characters. And I've always felt like that What that, what a movie like that would need is like the main character needs to be like Sherlock Holmes character within that time period and it's someone that we know it's a character we know that can lead us through this world that makes us understand it and like it but there's a lot of cool stuff like nemo is a cool character i really liked captain nemo i thought he was a yeah. really good addition yeah yeah um and even dorian gray i don't even think that was in the original comic i think they did that really well um yeah, he again wasn't bad yeah yeah but like the 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 guy who directed that directed blade and then he just quit. He quit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's really sad. <laughs> that really sucks. Yeah, I mean, again, also sometimes studios are just like, well, it has to include, everyone has to be able to see this movie. It has to be for families. It has to be for kids. Mm-hmm. We need toys. We need something to shove into a McDonald's, you know, kids meal, into a happy mm-hmm. meal for God's sakes. And it's just like, do we really though? Because 10 years later, Marvel started being able to make movies for everyone, but it didn't make anyone cringe. So, again, maybe it just has to be the perfect storm of, yeah. of things, of people. Yeah. But I think part of it also is Marvel took its time with it. Mm-hmm. It, lear- it learned from its mistakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and sometimes studios are just like, no, we need to rush it out. We need a filler in between our box, um, mm-hmm. our um, blockbusters, basically. Which is unfortunate because people are still putting time into this, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think I think people vastly overestimate how how like they think that like the Marvel model is either replicatable or like that it was like some genius thing. A lot of it was luck. 
Yeah. I mean, if 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 the Avengers that movie, if that movie did as well as like the Justice League movie, I don't think we're in the same bar with the MCU. Mm. Because everything hinged on that movie. Like the first Captain America movie was not super successful. The first Thor movie was not super successful. Not that not Hulk, really. that Hulk movie was not good. Not good. The first Hulk movie. Oof. Oh, with Eric Bana. Well, that one was also bad. <laughs> I, I, that is one of yeah. the worst movies I've literally ever seen. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> no, absolutely nothing. You mean to tell me there are giant dogs running around in San Francisco or wherever the hell they are and nobody sees them? Yeah. It's a 10 foot tall dog. <laughs> it is near Chihuahua. Yeah. yeah. And like, like, like someone, didn't someone see a 10 foot tall crap and like think, wow, where did this come from? Where did all this shit come from? I don't know. I'm gonna go water my roses. But like, the, the um the Edward Norton one I liked only because it actually showed Bruce Banner doing sciency things, whereas the Eric the Eric Banna Bruce Banner that's really hard to say um was stupid. He was yeah. straight up <laughs> dumb and was just like, yeah, I'm glad you got zapped with gamma radiation. Maybe it'll help your IQ. Um, at least Edward Norton was smart. Like the character yeah. was, I believed was smart. It's a, it's yeah, a I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think I think there's a ton of luck that came to the MCU, um, and I mean the fact that you know again Kevin Feige like he's he's a really smart guy who's been he's been making movies like he 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 produced the first X Men movie so he's had a lot of time to figure it out. Um, and I mean yeah, there were just to me there was a lot of movies that were like eh, not great. I mean I think the other thing too is like Disney owning them. I think that really helped too. Because yeah. Disney has this insane marketing, um, like their 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 ability to market the films is like it's like crazy. Um, because I don't think Iron Man two was good. I didn't um, like Iron Man two. Um, I liked parts of Iron Man three, but Iron Man one definitely yeah. was the yeah. was the one they were waiting for. Because I feel yeah. like they were like, if we can take the losses of Thor and Captain America. We're at least setting it up. We yeah. still have Iron yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. Um, because that still is one of my favorite movies. I think the first Iron Man movie is mm -hmm. not perfect, but a very good representation of where it was mm -hmm. gonna take go in the future. It's definitely it's 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 like yeah, if it weren't for that movie, the MCU doesn't exist. It just can't mm -hmm. work. Because that is the foundation. That's really the foundation. Yeah, it set the stage for how the humor mm -hmm. was going to be, the seriousness, yeah. um, the interactions with characters. Because we know how Tony Stark acts. How is he going to mm -hmm. be standing next to Captain America? You know, mm -hmm. so which yeah, sparks fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really it's all about Tony. I mean, even up to Endgame, it's oh, about yeah. Tony. He was a right? catalyst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so that covers everything. <laughs> Even got a little MCU discussion in there. Um, yeah, I, I like I like talking about the MCU too. Um, so yeah, and um, I, uh, hopefully we'll be back with you guys next week. We'll figure out another film to watch. Um, and uh, yeah, so check us out. Follow us on our social medias, and subscribe to her channel. Make some awesome content. Started doing reaction videos that are fun. <laughs> yeah, is that Ben Shapiro's real sister? I believe so. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was just a joke, but someone in the comments was just like, "No, that's his sister." I'm yeah, that is. That is his sister. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do some more research on that myself. But yeah, my channel is evolving. If you don't like Star Trek, there are reaction videos. That is also a motorcycle. In case I don't know if you can hear that. Um. Yeah, there's some reaction videos, there's some Star Trek, there's plenty of movie reviews, and I actually just started watching The Orville, so expect something like that to be out. Cool. And that's like Star Trek adjacent, right? It's a love letter to Star Trek. I'm three mm -hmm. episodes in, and I can already see how much Seth MacFarlane loves the fact that he is on the bridge of that ship, because like, he was actually in two episodes of Star Trek Enterprise. Oh, cool. When he was a struggling actor. Yeah. Like he loves Star Trek. So, nice. 
nice. It's always good to like see people live the dream, right? Yeah, and it's nice to know that it's being taken care of by someone who gets it and loves yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you'll are you going to do some reviews of that? Yeah, I'm going to binge the first season as quickly as possible and have a uh, something to say by hopefully the end of it. As soon as I'm done with the last episode of season one, I'll probably start filming something. Cool. I can't wait to see to see that video. Yay. Cool. All right. Yeah. And so I'll I'll have some more content. I'm gonna be doing a review with my friend Lucian. We're gonna review the tax collector. Nice. Which whew, man, that had some interesting reviews, some very interesting things were said about that film. Okay. So that'll be later today. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about our top five favorite uh, cartel related films. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks a lot, everybody for coming and um, we'll see you again next time. You know, may the force be with you and all that. Live long and prosper. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>